postman's been <clears throat> loads of um, silicon hose I've got spare brake pipe clips everything's clipped on anyway but I want to put X's on just to make sure we're IVA compatible we've got uh, new brand new horns because the old hair horns were rubbish so I've them in the bin I've got the sensors thermostat sensors for the radiators hang on so yeah we've got new thermostat sensors so we've got everything we need to start the plumbing now oh yeah I've got one of these as well this is something that we never thought we'd need but we do because of the IVA you've got to have a warning switch that's checkable so once I've wired that into the dashboard you'll be able to push that button there the red light will come on or if the brake fluid runs low the red light will come on as well um, and that's part of the IVA test so got to wire that in but that's a long way away there's other bits and bobs here there's just nuts and bolts and screws and packets of stuff everywhere so because I could only get one radiator I'm going to fit that radiator today fit the horns basically just do what I can and then I'm waiting on more parts spent ages trying to refit the fan won't bloody go and the reason why the core on these oh hang on let me just reset it away the core is about when I've just moved that a bit it's 25 mil yeah 24.8 so it's a 25 mil core now <clears throat> the new one this is the brand new radiator <clears throat> is Thirty-five. Thirty-six. It's twelve mil too wide. Look what it's done. I'm trying to push it in. So I'm going to have to perform a bit of surgery, which is going to be a pain. Well, it's not a pain in the. It is a fuck. It's a pain in the ass. Right. So what I've got to do is take these vents off, move them forward by about fifteen, twenty mil. And cut the back of the fiberglass off. In here. You see? So. I'd forgot that when I modified mine to the bigger, more powerful radiators. They were wider. So I've just struggled like a divvy. And um, obviously forgot all about it. But in the meantime, I've replaced all of the fuel hoses. So I've just spent probably two or three hours messing around with this. And then realised it's not going to work. And because it's so old, I'm going to have to cut them bolts off. Because they won't come off, I don't think. Anyway, a couple of minutes with the whizzer, and I'll mark it and cut it all off. Um, just just got to be done, there's no other way around it. Pain in the ass. but what can you do? <sighs> and that's one of the reasons... That's why I wanted to use the original radiators, because I knew everything would have went back perfect. Aftermarket stuff. Although it's a, a thicker core radiator, so it'll cool it better. Slightly different sizes, so it just adds to the pain in the um, pain in the rectum. But we're getting there. Right, this is a very rare sight. Me in PPE. What I've done, they'll show you. The vents here, where these grills go, right? These are too wide for the new radiators, so what I've got to do is cut off that black line with my little wallopy tool here. So I'm going to cut that off, and then the radiators will be a perfect fit. On my one, I've already done that. I cut these off years ago, but I forgot I'd done it. So it's just a little modification, and all it means is we bring the grills out an extra 25, 30 mil. Um, and everything is all right again, so I'm not sure if I can set the counter up. I'll do this and I'll try and set the counter up for the other side. Halfway through with my little tool. <clears throat> you got a nice straight edge. So yeah, we're halfway. Okay, after a lot of messing around and about another hour and a half, I've had to 
Move that bracket to there, so I've had to drill and tap the chassis. I've had to move that bracket over and drill and tap the chassis. And I've had to move that one and drill through the body there. And I've had to move, probably can't see it, that one. So basically, all four of them have been moved. I've also put the grill back on. But, let's just move that pipe out of the way. That radiator now is rock solid. It's, it's fucking better than it is in my, in my own car, to be honest. So once the other radiator comes, I can do that from the other side. But what I'm going to do is rebuild the suspension and move the car over. Because I was lying on the floor there. And obviously I won't fit in there because it's too close to the wall. So, what I'm going to start doing now is replacing all the hoses. And I can start doing a little bit of plumbing. Progress. This is the brake caliper for the back. Genuine Lucas Galen um, caliper. <clears throat> original Jag XJS. If you're buying re um, reconditioned calipers off the internet and especially eBay, be careful. There are tons and tons of cheap, nasty copies about. All right, this is the handbrake caliper. I can take that um, masking tape off the pads now. I'm going to put new pads on it anyway. Um, but that's the handbrake caliper. These are just primer, They're just red primer and then I'll go over it with the red engine enamel I don't know where I've put it though it's up it's there somewhere in amongst all that um I've taken the central console out center console out because I've got to take out the gear selector cable which is that red one I've got to take that one out um, so I can buy a new one because it's split and the only other thing I've done is fitted the fan and the vents and the radiator that took me bloody hours and hours and hours but um, what I can do now is start rebuilding the suspension because this corner's done and then wheel it out, wheel it back in closer to this wall and, and start on that side. Um, but I can't do much more in there until the other radiator turns up because obviously it's a pain in the ass. It's nice and easy being able to sit in there and reach across with the drills and the screws and things like that and the spanners. But when the engine's in, it's a pain in the pain in the rectum but anyway i want to get the radiator in as soon as it turns up and then i can have a look at putting the engine back in but i haven't even started cleaning the engine yet and if i just step back you'll see the state of the garage look there's crap everywhere there the old radiators there's convoluted hose there's tubing all over the place we got packets of washers and nuts and bolts all brand new to use up um <clears throat> tons and tons of silicon and all basically everything i need to put us all back together apart from time but we're getting there so i haven't done a this is what we're doing video today because i just haven't done anything worth watching so i can just show you the aftermath but obviously on the next slide i'll show you what we're doing so it is an hour an hour i've been on the road to pick them things up these are the adapters for me power steering rack. So I'll get home, clean them up, a little bit of PTFE, put them on the car, and the grey one's back on the road. Fucking <laughs> hour. Can you believe it? Ah, oh, well, never mind. Jobs are good. Okie dokie. So I've just been for the time OC. It's passed again, as I knew it would. And I've surprised myself. It's done a grand total of a thousand and about 50 miles since its last MOT. <laughs> Fucking a thousand miles. And, and bear in mind with the lockdown and the problems I've had getting my hands on a new power steering rack, it was two years ago since it was MOT'd. So it's done a thousand miles in fucking two years. Just what a joke. Anyway, as you can see, it's absolutely manky. There's no hand car washes open and I hate washing cars with a passion, just does my fucking head in. So what I might do is ring a mate of mine who I know and get him to come out and valet it. You need to charge about 40 quid. But that's that anyway, so that's past the MOT. On the other side of it is the radiators just turned up, the second radiator, so I can go over to Connor's and fit the radiator on the other side of the car and then plumb all the plumbing back in. And then we can start working on the engine, put the engine back in and start rebuilding the yellow one. 
So, in a couple of weeks, we could have two of these on the roads now. This one passed its IVA. The other one's got to go through its IVA. So there's a few little bits and bobs, look. That's got side repieces. The other one hasn't. So I've, I've already bought them. I've got to put them in. These wing mirrors will move. The other ones don't. But they don't come out past the wheel at. So I might be okay with the IVA. Um, obviously, I've got, if you have a look under the bonnet there, just down there is the brake reservoir. I've got the parts, I've got to change it because there's no brake warning lights on the fluids. And there's very little else that I've got to do with the yellow one to make it the same. <laughs> look at the state of that. There's very little I've got to do on the yellow one to make it the same as the grey one and get it through its IVA. Now that's obviously not been cleaned for months and months and months, but that's the inside of mine. Oh, fucking baseball caps everywhere to keep the sun out of your eyes. So my goal is, once we've done the outsides of the uh, the yellow one, we'll start attacking the interior. So I want the interior basically up to the same standards as my own. So, not a big, well it is a big job, it's a fucking great big job. But we'll get there anyway. Right, so I'm going to put this back to bed and then go and start working on the other one. So I will see you in a... Ooh, for me, it's about half an hour, but for you, it's just a little click, and there'll be me in front of the yellow one. Second radiator's here. <clears throat> so, what I'll do is I'll just place in the chassis, see where it's going to go. I've got a modifier, because obviously it, one goes in normal, the other one goes in back to front. But I'll show you what I'm doing as I figure it out. Starting on the plumbing. That hose there... Well, yeah, not wrong with it. It's going to be replaced with that piece of silicon, but obviously it's a lot bigger, so I'm going to have to cut it down. And it goes in that corner there and connects up to this stainless steel pipe. Now, obviously, I need two hands for this, so I will cut it and then show you what's going on with the fitting. Okay, a bit of progress. This cross pipe is on. I'm not sure if you can see under there. There's a brand new silicon hose in that corner. So it comes out the top of the radiator, goes along there, goes into the top of the engine. It's done the same in that corner, but you can't really see it because it's under the, it's right in the back in the corner, it's a bloody nightmare. It comes along this hose. I haven't changed that. That goes in, obviously. I'll put this one on, take that off. That one will go onto the engine. Um. I've connected this one up, so this will come out and go in, so that goes up to the water pump, and obviously I haven't done that one there, because I need to get in that door to do a U-bend, and somewhere, I've got that piece, so that should theoretically come off this hose here, round, and onto, I could probably get it leaning through, actually that's not a bad idea, so I might be able to get that done, now once all these are in, then obviously the water pipes are ready we can get the engine back in what we've got to do then is just under there I'm not sure we can see there's a 10 mil outlet behind that engine um I keep calling them the engine mountains radiator mountain there same as that one that piece there is exactly the same obviously because that radiator is in the other way now because of the way these new radiators are a lot bigger than the old ones. I can't use that original fan. So I've got aftermarket fans in my garage. This is solid, look, that's going nowhere. So I'm gonna to have to fit an aftermarket fan to it and fabricate a bracket. But it's not a problem because it's exactly what I had to do on my own car. So it's just something for the future. But anyway, um, we're getting there. We're, we're working through the plumbing. Over there, look, let me just zoom in on there. We've got the gearbox off, so Connor started cleaning the gearbox down, ready to be repainted. I don't know where he's gone, he's fucking scratching his ass somewhere. So that's um, that's been separated from the car, so we'll clean all that, check all the seals, check all the bearings, and put us all back together. But basically that was in perfect working order, so that just needs 
cosmetic tidying up. Seems the whole car, it's all cosmetic. There's very little damage with the exception of a handbrake cable, which I've ordered off speedy cables, and a gear selector cable because it's split, which is under that blue piece. There is no other damage on the car, it's all cosmetic. So that's where we're up to. Back again, back again. What I'm going to be doing today <clears throat> is rebuilding the rear driver's side suspension. That way I can put the wheel on, move the car from one side of the garage to the other side of the garage. And then that way I can strip the far side down and start working on that because it's all done on this side. It's just the far side with it being up against the wall. Isn't So, I've trial fit this so I know it's all good. What we've got, let me just drop down. That grease off my finger, I'll show you. What we've got there is the upright resting on the gearbox. Hold on a minute. There you go, and all the component parts. So, the disc looks manky from this angle, but it's, it's oily fingerprint, so it'll all be clean with thinners before it goes back together. So, what I've done with the upright, obviously, it's all been painted. If you remember how dirty it was, scrubbed down and painted. It's been filled with fresh grease. The bearing. Oh, in there was all been scrubbed, cleaned, chemically cleaned and filled with fresh grease. And then all we've got to do is lay that. There you go, in there like that. I'll just give us a... And that there then will spin around nice. Now obviously on the car this stays still and the disc spins, but you get the idea. So all in there now is all sexy. And covered in grease. Um, so what we've got to do now is put on the brake caliper. This is a Jag four pot caliper. It needs another couple of coats of paint. Um, to be honest, I wish I had left it in prime actually because it's fucking better color, but it doesn't matter. Once it's all been painted, it'll be fine. So that simply sits in there like that. Um, bolts. Go back in here. Same that one. So all we do is tighten these bolts up. I want to say it's, e it's just easier to go fingers first and we'll get the ratchets on it. I've actually got in my garage at home, which I haven't brought over, a compressor. And if I had brought the compressor, because it rigged up the air tools from, <clears throat> and zapped it. But to be honest, it's more of a pain in the ass than it's worth, because the compressor is huge. And the air tools only work when you want to. And also, because anyone who wants to do a job like this themselves is not going to have air tools they're only going to have access to the basics so why why um, make life complicated for the lizard friends that seem to be on a time lapse shouldn't I? I don't see anything more boring than watching someone tighten up a couple of bolts but that's the reality of working on these type of things I have to put a bit of grunt in to get everything tight now obviously while it's in this state I'll put the new brake discs in For the winges, we're going to break out that, that there. 
open to throw a wrench and at the moment it's set to uh, 56 Yeah, it's set to 56 newton meters, so let's see what it says. Hear that click? That says it's tight enough, but there's a bit more there, so I'll put a bit more on it. I think. The last time I used this, <coughs> yeah, there you go. The last time I used the torque wrench was when I was putting the cylinder heads on my V8 in my car. Specialist bit of case, but worth having. And again, that one's probably about 30 quid. So, always handy to have a decent torque wrench. So that there is the. Um, caliper on while it's in that state down here i've got a brand new set of pads so we can put the new pads in before i do come on these bo oh, boxes is the pins and the springs Right, as usual, I can't find this, so I will press pause while I find the little pins that go through there. Kind of a pause. That's what I've just been looking for. These are the pins that drop through there that hold in the brake. So what I'm going to do is just a little rub, not a major. I'm just going to take off any surface rust. Right, simple. Two brand new brake pads, and all you do is slot them in. And because everything is clean, it should just slot straight in like that. And then that one goes in there. Done. Now, because I've got grease on the inside, I'm going to put a little bit on there. Not a lot, just to help it through. Now, obviously, that's being painted, so need a little a tappy tool. And then you've just got to Make sure it's all lined up. There you go. There you go. How easy is that? That's in. Now we should. Oh, I never thought. Oh, pure by chance. I forgot to line up. Let's see if you can see it on this one. See that hole? Let's get lined up. That little hole. That's a clip there. A P clip, I mean, has to go through the hole. And I forgot to line it up, but pure by chance, it's there. So, put that in, press it on. And done. And that's what holds that on. I'm going to do the same on this side. And just. Tiny little bit of grease again, that's just to help it slide in because obviously it's all been painted in that. And this time, while I remember, 
Make sure that little hole is out. How easy was that? Second little um, share clip. Done. Simple. Now, the only thing that's not on are these little springs. Now, if you have watched the other videos where I rebuild the front brakes, you've seen I missed one. I put it on after I've done the video, but because I've already made that mistake and learned from it, I remembered. Oh my god, that's fucking heavy. I remembered. Put my springs in. So, yeah. You can see the disc there moving on the inside. Look, all nice and sexy. So what we do is hook under and then you just hook that back under there. Oh, you're fucking thing's falling over. Hang on. And then it's on like that. Where's the other one? Where's the other one there? See me again, look. So, this side with the hook. Actually, I could probably do that way there. Hook under there like that. And then. There you go. And then there's the two springs in. So now that. Oh, oh but. Look at hell. Look at that. Should spin. My god, this is heavy. I'm guessing this weighs the full assembly. About 25 kilo. Yeah, easily, easily 25k. Because that's not far off or about the same weight as my big kettlebell that I have in the dojo. Right, the next one is the um, hammer leg. So I'll pull that masking tape off of there. And that off there. Now, that will go. Just trying to remember how that will go, to be honest. There you go, that will go that way like that. But what I've got to do is free off. The handbrake. Now then, the way we free off these, we pull out. Circlip here, which is something easier than it sounds. Get rid of that, and then there's a big screw head there. Look. So, if you want to do the screw, what it does is it opens up the gap. So, imagine there's your handbrake calipers there. With a screw through it, so I might think it's a screw. If you pull it in, close it, and if you loosen it off, it opens it out, so you just loosen the screw off a bit. And then, if it can break, I'm not fucking sure which way it goes. Right? There you go. There you go, just like that, and then when you pull the brake, that pulls it in tight. So there's that, but amongst them as well, we've got this little bracket. Now that's the bracket that holds the handbrake cable. So logic would tell me that that sandwiches between there like that. Now that can't be right because they don't line up. So, there you go, it goes. Hang on a minute. It goes that way. 
because it's in a hole right there, there you go. So it goes ambre caliper, housing bracket, handbrake, and then those two line up. So you can get a handbrake cable through there like that. That makes sense. We'll see once we got the bolts in. Threaded to be honest, but I feel like they are. Maybe it's just paint. Hmm, not gonna matter. Alright, what size was it? Let's see. It was just paint, I thought it was threaded, but obviously it's not. So, washer, nut, yeah, we can put tiny little touch of grease on, so that if I ever need to adjust this in the future, it won't wash itself solid. 18, 15, 19, nice and normal. 17 not span is missing. Have you spotted the deliberate mistake yet? Forgot to put that on. No bad. And there's another reason why you need to do things up finger tight at first, just to check. For this side, the ambre cable was frayed because I reused it, but obviously it was damaged, and if it's damaged, it gets changed. So, going from this side, I think. By knocking that through, then what it's done is it's knocked out. Just a little bit of paint. From the inside of the out, from the inside of the um, Where this is, is that in here? 
Right, tis done. Let's take that off there because I know I need a 19 to put the thing back together. So, there, let's spin it. There's your handbrake there, look. So, when the handbrake is pulled, that there is lifted up. See a flexion there? That's what activates the handbrake. So now that there can go back on the car. Hang on before it does. I've just noticed I'm leaking out of the gearbox. Gearbox oil. So Alright, don't ask me how much them gearboxes weigh because I've no idea, but it's a lot more than fucking 25 kilo, I can tell you that. Yeah. So, there's a little air vent plug. The gearbox oil is all drift. It's not a problem because I was going to change the oil anyway. But just for the sake of cleaning, I don't really want oil dripping everywhere. So I'll do that in a minute. Because obviously, once this goes back in, if there's any oil drips onto the clutch plate, you'll lose traction or friction. If you lose friction, you lose traction. So. We'll clean all of that up later. We've got a little wipe around the inside of the bell housing. But got a little bit of grease on there, not a lot. Just to grease the beard enough. Time for clean gloves and down on the floor. As you can see, this is all on and rebuilt. Now, the way the handbrake works is you pull that lever there, the handbrake stops. So, you put this screw, you tighten it up, that's binding now, a bit more. That's tight, so we've got to wind it back so it's free. Go another half turn. Now that's nice. Now if you push the handbrake, which is the equivalent of pulling the cable, it won't spin. See? Off go. Spin, 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 and then it locks. Spin, 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 and it locks. And that's how easy it is to do the handbrake. And then all you've got to do is make sure that that lines up with there. Put your split pin through. These are a bit short, but it doesn't matter. And then just Bend the ends over like that. Bend that end over. And now that can't be moved. Oops, 
There you go. That adjusting screw won't go in. That spins. As soon as you press the handbrake, I'll pull the handbrake. Done. 